Welcome to the Science Radio Network. This is a celebration. Why a radio station dedicated to science? Our entire civilization is based on science. Without it, we would literally not have a chair to sit on, let alone an organized and ordered civil society. Everything we have, everything we make or invent or dream up involves science. The human enterprise that clearly marks out our entire tenure here on Earth. Those cities that appear as grey etchings on the terrain when viewed from space. Evidence or monuments to hundreds or thousands of compounded ideas, work and dreams. So what do we mean by science exactly? If you put this question randomly to people on the street like what do you even think of when you hear the word science, what stereotype? Well, you might get responses like lab coats, ivory towers, nerds, high tech, nuclear physics, etc. And although some will give you a good explanation, far too many will miss the mark. If you don't believe me, go ahead and try it. Turn on that voice recorder on your cell phone and go ask people around you, who you know, what is science exactly? What do you think of when you hear the word science? So at its core, science is the way we use information to improve our lives. In fact, the very word means knowledge. And it's what we humans do best. We collect knowledge. Just look around you. Everything you see was derived from that creative process. When we are curious about something, even on an informal, non-academic basis, we give rise to questions and ideas, creativity. Our enthusiasm builds. We imagine a new situation and the new world that our success might give way to. Sometimes we quickly construct a vision in the mind's eye that gives us a feeling that we can do something or that we can resolve some question if we just follow this through. Hence, we are dreamers, all of us. Scientists and dreamers are the same beings at heart. The same hair-raising excitement at the prospect of creating something new and improved for our world. We are always looking to the future, into what might be. My favourite definition of science is this. Dreaming of the impossible and making it happen. That's what science is all about. It has also been called a tool for survival. The more we know, the more likely we are to survive. And the more we know and survive, the deeper our questions become. Science is indeed the search for who we are. While some of our explanations in science is confirmation of what we suspect, some of the time we get big surprises, often profound. This is for good reason. We didn't invent the universe, we were simply discovering it, exploring it. In explaining how science works, it's tempting to recite the many high-tech examples like fantastic information technology, that we can scarcely keep up with, or the life-saving world of medicine. But an equally valid example is the humble chair that I just mentioned, that thing you sit on. There was a time when that was somebody's thought experiment before it became a reality. How far back in history? Oh, I really don't know when. Somewhere between when we lived in caves and when we started to build our own homes. Somebody thought of how to make such a sitting device. Somebody pondered the problem of what materials they would need and after a few trials some bad practice was identified and discarded. The design was no doubt improved because at that point they had the experience and confidence of how to construct such things. You learn by doing. But there is something here which we constantly overlook in our society, that the critical thinking and revision of design 
was a great joy to those involved, as it is to this day. Knowledge is perhaps the greatest joy. That process of figuring out problems and bringing a project to completion is quite an ecstasy. Much later, the question of replicating this handmade project would have been another exciting project for the early furniture makers. And of course, the question of mass production of chairs today will present a whole different conversation. What kind of seating do you have in mind? Comfortable armchairs for the home perhaps? Or high volume items like those found in school halls and involving the fabrications of tubular steel and plastic moulding? Either way, I bet I could still find someone out there who loves their craft and every aspect of the industrial process of furniture making. But while the joys of such creative activity are clear, we must not forget the difficulties of problem solving. Sure, if you ask any chemist or engineer, you'll be told tales of exasperation in search for solutions, the emotional swings between pain and reward. But that very struggle is what makes science so great and so worthwhile, something we can actually base an entire worldly existence on. That certification process of science that critical verification mechanism is what makes science so valuable and precious. To know if something will work, we have to try it out. This is what tells us that our dreams might actually be doable or whether we might have to go back and do a rethink. A single experiment for verification is worth a thousand conversations. There is nothing more beneficial than such a trial in the real world to give us confidence to move forward. Nothing like a test in reality. We can still recall the famous mission when Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon in 1969. What an amazing psychological moment that was for the human race. For the first time, thanks to our science, along with the technology derived from it, a creature from this world walked upon another world. As Carl Sagan put it, from a million year old footprint in volcanic ash to that left by an astronaut on the moon, we have walked far. For that Apollo mission in the 1960s, think of all the teams responsible and all the verification needed for all the systems, the oxygen supply, the crew monitoring, the rocket fuel systems, the pressure systems, the telemetry to communicate with Earth. The computer systems needed, though comically primitive by today's standards, although they were implemented in my lifetime. All these were critical aspects for success. A failure of any one of these vital components would have resulted in infamous and tragic disaster. And not only did the underlying science need to be double checked, the machinery used needed to be tested and verified. Looking at the Apollo lander, Nothing could have been quite so unromantic and ugly. Yet, it succeeded in transporting Armstrong and Aldrin to the lunar surface. Pretty faces never took us to the moon. Testing is the cradle of science, the jewel in the crown, the linchpin of the entire operation. Everything in science needs to be verifiable, no exceptions, ever. And it needs to be verifiable ultimately by anyone. Authorities allowed in the actual process. No special dispensation, no fudging of the facts, no glossing over anything. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Always. The fact that we can verify all claims means that scientific principles have a very long life. When Empedocles first accurately measured the size of the earth. A big telltale sign that his work was valid was that his numerical values were used for centuries by sailors whose lives depended on it. A more contemporary example is the cell phone industry. The GSM specification for this technology stands at something like 10,000 pages thick. We know it is not fiction 
because the cell phone in your hand actually works. You can actually, in an instant, use it to talk to someone on the other side of the world. And of course, you can use it for much, much more. The technology is so powerful, a huge industry has grown up based on it and impacting culture and lives around the globe. But there is still another important reason why the verification of science is of such value, to avoid lies. From the moment in our evolution that we learn to speak and move forward with languages to become social, there was a possibility of uttering things that were not true, of being deceitful, playing tricks and telling lies, or in some cases just simply mistaken. With such practices came privilege and inequality. Today, we find ourselves awash in lies, government distractions, corporate propaganda, media being paid to gaslight and push a certain narrative. But I would argue that science culture would improve critical thinking and analysis per head of population and in time would erode the ruse mentality so prevalent now. Having made our civilization possible in the first place, science could actually save it. So why have science on the radio? Science radio is not a lesson on the radio in an academic sense. It, to be fair, it can give a kind of a high level lesson in a given topic or even an introduction to something. But we need to be careful not to get lost in lab work or equations like the professional in the field. Instead, a science radio channel is about creating a platform or a place people can listen to be engaged in an everyday sense just like with any radio station while driving relaxing or as background listening an atmospheric companion for people everywhere who are concerned and interested in the state of our world and whose aspirations are full of tomorrow but in creating content whether focusing on astrophysics the environment or inventions we must make sure that it is digestible by all Grandma in the kitchen must be able to understand it. And while she may not be so interested in, say, some segment about the winds of Mars, maybe she thinks that that last discussion on the resurrection of the bombed out VW factory after World War II was fascinating. The heritage of science offers probably the richest storytelling of all. Science for past, present and future. We have much to learn from the past. We monitor the present for news on latest development, but we also dream of the future. Science is for everybody. Science Radio Network, or SRN International, is a 24-hour radio station dedicated to science and technology. It is already operational, and we hope to continually improve it by adding relevant content. The eventual aspiration is to create an atmospheric, everyday radio platform for people worldwide who embrace science as the most meaningful human enterprise. The romance of radio is everlasting in society. The popularization and appreciation of science has largely been unaddressed. We need to celebrate it and promote it in today's world. In short, we need to bring science out of the lab and into the kitchen. And on that point, don't ever worry that you are not qualified or good enough to open the door and explore the details of science. After all, all our knowledge built up in every area of science is enormous and daunting if you try to get a handle on all of it. But if you consider the top professional scientist, the extreme techie or even the whiz kid, I can assure you they are all in the same boat as you, trying to keep afloat in a vast ocean of information. Sure, they may have spent years in the lab or working in an in-depth, fantastic project, but when they drift outside of their specialist territory, they are as lost as you. After initial consolidation and some building of scheduled programming, we look to have a community of paid contributors as we grow the network and improve scheduling. The great news is that the station is already broadcasting and can be listened to anytime, anywhere. So we look to improve it day to day. This takes time and work with a lot of script writing, recording and editing. 
We have a lot to do and sort out, a lot to build, categorise and grow. Representing science in the radio as something digestible to all members of the public is, in itself, an art and not a science. Traditionally, this has not been something carried out by scientists. They have often been too busy. And many will have something to learn but contribute to this effort. In recent years, things have changed with the proliferation of social media and sharing of ideas on the internet as people begin to focus more on the workings of technology. In the end, if we can talk about everyday things at the dinner table, we can talk about science topics on the radio. So we are not just creating a radio station, we're building a community.